I mean, if, if the Americans had coordinated and the Ukrainians had staged it, that building would be flat now. If you're going to have a shot at uh, the building, uh, you, you actually give it your best shot. All I can see is a staged, what they call a false flag attack, mm. uh, high on aluminum and very very low on explosive. I mean, the ironic thing is it's a false flag attack and the flagpole survived. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Quite extraordinary. So it's either a homemade thing um, or it's something they've staged for themselves. It, it just shows you how desperate they are to show themselves as victims now. Yeah. But I, I noticed looking at Russian TV, they're not even mentioning it. Oh, really? Really? Well, that's, that, that's, that's curious. I mean, because it is suggested by some that this was put up by, by Russia to try and foster a sense of a solidarity among the Russian people, to show the people of Russia the wars, you know, close to home, it hits, hits close to home, and, and let's get behind the, 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 the fighters of Russia in Ukraine. That was part of the theory, but you clearly clearly don't buy that. And the idea that it's not being much publicised in Russia kind of supports that suspicion. Yeah, it does. I mean, I, I think it's a, a bit of a pattern that you see. I'm, I believe absolutely sincerely and certainly that uh, Russia uh, did the Nord Stream attack with its specialist submarines. They've got eight types of them. And this is the next in a sequence of Russia trying to show that it's actually suffering. Um, well, of course, we know the Ukrainians have been very careful not to attack the Russians unless uh, the targets are part of their war effort. Uh, and I think the Russians are actually saying, you know, you know, John, in 1984, George Orwell says, you know, the reason the population are under pressure is because there's this illusion that there's a war on and there's troops going around in lorries and things. But in fact, Winston Smith says you know, there's never any impact or attack on the on London. So it's a strange kind of war. And I suspect the Russians are in 1984 land at the moment. They, they know this is going on somewhere over the horizon. But but they're mobilizing and Putin's having a real trouble trying to mobilize the country behind him. And this may be a pathetic attempt, I'm afraid, to try and convince the Russian people uh, that there is a war going on. Yes. Uh, I wonder, you, know, you wonder from the Ukrainian point of view, tell me your thoughts, is there a particular benefit to killing Putin if that were, were possible? I mean, of course, he's the, the commander of Russia's military, but who's to know what that would lead to? Who would come afterwards? Would they be more, more savage in the way that they prosecute the war than even Putin? No, in fact, it suits the Ukrainians to keep him in, 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 in post. I mean, he's a, he's a prescribed uh, war cram, criminal candidate in The Hague. Um, he's, he's actually conducting a really inefficient strategic and tactical campaign in Ukraine. Uh, better, better the devil you know. And, and as you hint there, John, you know, what's coming in behind him uh, could actually be even worse. There's a chap called Petrushev. His son is the Minister of Agriculture. He hates the West with a vengeance. Mm. And if we're trying to limit escalation here, you don't want him in post. And the other two candidates, uh, I must say, Mishustin, who's the Prime Minister, and Volodin, who's the Chairman of the Cha uh, State Duma, they're not any better than Putin. And of course, they have to deliver uh, for the people who run the country, the sort of 350,000 or so organized criminals, oligarchs, members of the armed forces and the FSB who actually run Russia. Now, now we've, we've seen today President Zelensky of Ukraine in The Hague arguing for Vladimir Putin to face justice at the International Criminal Court. There's a warrant out for Vladimir Putin. Is there any part of you that thinks a warrant on Putin may be counterproductive to the hopes of eventually getting round the negotiating table? Or is it simply a matter of justice and answering for the crimes, the many crimes that have been committed? <laughs> Really good point. It's something I used to dwell on when I was serving is um, if we'd let Gaddafi escape, for example, from Libya, the war would have been over much earlier. And you think if, you know, Assad had been able to flee somewhere safe, uh, then the war wouldn't have got on so long. But I think the scale of the crimes here, both against Ukraine uh, and its people, are so great that I think that the rest of the world will be appalled if that pressure wasn't put on. I noticed that the, um, uh, the South Africans have said if, uh, if Putin goes down there for a BRICS meeting, he'll be arrested. Uh, mm. And that's a sign of the times, I think. Yes. Uh, my own view, for what it's worth, John, is that he may be put up as a sacrificial lamb by the Russians when they've had enough at the end of this year. Interesting thought. And uh, just lastly, you mentioned a moment ago the uh, the reports of Russian ships being seen near the site of the Nord Stream gas pipeline before those explosions last September. Still, you know, no clear, conclusive evidence of what happened there, but you have your, your, your sights on Russia. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, everybody says, oh, you know, what, what interest did they have? Well, the interest they have is they were showing themselves as a victim 
Um, and also they're doing a typical mafia trick of saying, look, if I can do it here and prepare to do it to myself, I'll do it anywhere. Uh, but the critical issue is there are only two countries in the world that have the capability to do it with that precision. One is the United States, and all their capability was an ocean away, so it wasn't them. Um, and the Russians, so the Russians for some 30 years now have had an organization called Gugi, uh, G-U-G-I, uh, and it's their Directorate of uh, Deep Sea Exploration and Exploitation. Mm. And they have about eight specialist submarines, some of which are mounted on big uh, former uh, missile submarines that are precisely in the business of doing this sort of job.